Uh, today's webinar is going to be an intro to Twitter, how to get started, um, and why it's useful for you to really take that plunge, because it is an investment uh, versus other social networks or other avenues that you could use to grow your business and market to customers. So I'm going to be talking about why it's useful and also why it can be more useful than some other social networks. Once we kind of cover that ground, I'll be taking you through how to create an account, how to understand the Twitter sphere and all of its lingo, um, and then also how to grow that account over time. At the end of the webinar, we'll be doing a Q&A. So if you have any questions now or as we go through this, please type them into the question box. Um, first, Twitter has already been adopted by over a quarter billion active users. And so it's become one of the most important social networks and really an untapped resource for a lot of folks who haven't yet understood why so many are trying to leverage the platform. It's become the world's largest real-time discussion, and whenever there's breaking news or trending stories, it always happens on Twitter first. The problem is that Twitter can be a very confusing social network when you're getting started. There isn't a lot of explanation on what to do and how things work, which is why we hope that this webinar will be useful for you. There's a couple of benefits that you may be aware of for Twitter and seeing other folks, other competitors, uh, really uh, cultivate. For one thing, it's a really great way to track developments in technology. The web and mobile development space is always evolving very rapidly, always new languages being developed, and it's difficult to stay on top of all the latest trends. Twitter acts like a giant real-time news feed, so you can cultivate it and stay a step of ahead of everyone else. That's why so many reporters are flocking to Twitter, because the news always starts there. Um, a second benefit is to be able to reach new clients. With a quarter billion people, we found that it's a great way to get in touch with large numbers of people who you don't already know, but around shared interests. Within the web and mobile development space, we've actually identified 150,000 users who are talking just about this area pretty actively. But there's certainly millions more who may need your services for their efforts. And so it can be a very valuable and untapped marketing channel. A third benefit of Twitter is that it allows you to build deeper connections with current customers. Maintaining constant contact with your clients can be very important to sustaining a relationship long term but writing long emails and blog posts isn't always viable when you just have a short update or bit of information. And so that's kind of an avenue where Twitter fills a gap. It also allows you to listen to your customers. If you follow them, read what they're talking about, and provide support when needed, then it keeps a two-direction lane of communication open and active. A final benefit, which we'll talk a bit about how to get started using, is that you can connect with fellow developers, especially alpha developers. We're starting to build an active community on Twitter of alpha developers um, using a hashtag alpha dev, and I'll be explaining what that means. Um, but you should know that Twitter allows you to collaborate with each other to have these type of open, discussion, uh, open discussions on your next big idea. And so when you're having trouble, you can ask for help and support, or you can ask for folks to collaborate with you. The benefits are really endless once you unlock this tool. So before diving in on how to really use Twitter, we should ask why do folks use it at all? Because there's been a proliferation of social networks over the last few years. Uh, the way to think about it is that each social network serves its own purpose and often very different purposes. If you're using YouTube, it's because you want to be able to share videos. Instagram lets you share pictures. Tumblr lets you blog. Each one serves its own niche role. The two biggest social networks are Facebook and Twitter, and they serve very different purposes. Chances are you're on Facebook, and you know that it lets you keep in touch with a few people who you already know in real life, whether those are friends, coworkers, family. It lets you show pictures and updates of maybe a newborn or graduation or those critical moments in your life. Twitter is very different. It isn't about keeping in touch with a few real friends. It's about connecting with large numbers of people who you don't actually know. And the reason why it's useful for that is that people are able to connect around their common interests. They get to talk about what they care about, whether that can be football, whether it's following the latest celebrities, whether it's following the latest news or technology or businesses. Twitter allows people to connect around their interests. 
it's like a giant real-time chat room. Pretend that you're watching the Super Bowl on TV. A very common experience that people have while watching it or other events is that they end up yelling at the TV uh, for something that goes wrong, some play that's fumbled. Um, Twitter lets you all talk together. Uh, and sorry, I'm from Boston, so we're going to have to go against the Giants here. But whatever you like to talk or dish against, uh, you can really be able to talk as one big group around this common event that's happening. That happens when there's the latest iPhone is out, when there's the latest platform, when today uh, Firefox moved to Yahoo as their major uh, search component. All these different developments in technology always happen and are talked about on Twitter first. Um, and that's one avenue for why it can be really a valuable way uh, to think about it and to use it. It's really a giant conversation. Uh, I'm going to show a brief video now. Okay, from Zach, before, yep. you, before you hit that play button, if you'd make your screen just a little bit smaller, because this is a not a great medium, this go to medium for that. Yeah, that's probably it. And so we'll be a little choppy, folks, for slower connections. But all right, go ahead. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you, Dave. Uh, we're going to shrink this down so it's better quality for you all. Uh, and this is a video from Twitter on how those conversations that I was talking about that happen on Twitter can be really valuable when leveraged for a business. We need a little louder audio. You might need to take off your headset or something that we had done before. First turn tweets. Thanks. In the settings on everything from gadgets, both big and small to exclusive tickets to their favorite destinations. Horton Steakhouse created a weary traveler with a prime cut and excited the taste buds of jet setters everywhere. And Burberry went backstage with the first ever tweet walk to show the world what they'll be wearing next. With just 140 characters, Twitter has become the largest real-time conversation ever created. A global dialogue where people talk about their deepest interests, including their business. Whether your company is just starting out, growing by leaps and bounds, or already an industry leader, it's easy to get started on Twitter. Simply create a user handle and profile that reflect the unique identity of your business. Then, listen, monitor trends, watch your industry, and when you are ready, join the conversation. Be ready to help a customer the second they're in need by using an app file. Create six second movies using Vine that give a behind the scenes look at your business. And use retweets to create promotions that attract new business. And when you're ready to take your message further, reach new customers by promoting those tweets. And grow your follower base when your promoted account appears in front of the right people at the right time. Because Twitter isn't just 140 characters. It's content that brings the world closer through conversation. Those conversations lead to customers. Customers lead to business, and leading businesses say it on Twitter. I hope you enjoyed the video. And one of the things that should be clear right away is that Twitter really does have its own language. There were a lot of words in there, such as follow and tweet and retweet and favorite and promoted and timeline. And all of these words really make it confusing for when folks get started. So we're just going to dive right in and try to understand this, this framework, this language that they use. And then we're going to create an account and show it to you in action. And at the end of this webinar, before the Q&A, we'll show you the video again. And by then, hopefully, everything that they talked about makes a lot more sense. So one of the closing lines in the video is that Twitter is content that brings the world closer through conversation. And the key to understand that it's really you get to choose what type of content, what type of conversation you're interested in getting involved in, what you want to hear. In a lot of ways, this is like an RSS feed, a news feed, where you're able to choose the blogs or the people that you find most interesting, and then their content comes to you. And so this form of following content and people that you care about really makes the structure opt-in. People have to choose to follow you. Unlike traditional marketing, where you may be trying to find targeted customers who are already reading a magazine or listening to the radio, 
you aren't able to kind of interrupt their conversations by forcing your way in. You have to have something interesting and different to say, and people kind of have to choose to follow you. Now, what are they following? On Twitter, people are following what's called a tweet. And a tweet is a message. It's an expression of a moment or an idea. And it can contain text. It can contain photos or videos. You saw a lot of those different options and mixtures inside the, uh, the video we just saw. Uh, and tweets are generally limited to 140 characters, a lot like text messages on the phone. And this brevity, this short length, can be really useful once you get used to it. For a lot of folks, when they're getting started, they feel like they have too much to say. Uh, but this 140 characters, really, when you try to break it down just to one idea, can really get to the core of what you need to say. It can make you, it can force you to get rid of all the extra stuff. Um, and when you follow a user, their tweets, their messages show up on your timeline. So now we have a lot of words, follow, tweet, timeline, and we're going to just dive into Twitter and see what that actually looks like. So if you're using a, a browser, you can log in to twitter.com, and this is how you're going to create your Twitter account. You can log in, as Al I could, as Alpha Software, or you can sign up for a new account on Twitter. So you just click Sign Up for Twitter, and it will take you to a page where it lets you choose your name, your email, your password, and your username. Now, the really important piece here is the username. This is something that folks tend to overlook. Um, but the username is really how you identify yourself um, on Twitter. It's like your email address or handle. It's what everyone else is going to use um, when they are when they're messaging you. So I'm just going to create an account. Just create password, and I'll be Alpha Dev Demo. That's just going to be my account name. If you're using a business, then it makes sense to use your business name there. If you're trying to do it for a personal account, then it makes sense to use your real full name there. Try to make it something simple. It can even be the same username as your full name if that isn't taken. This does have to be unique. But once you find something that you're comfortable with, you can sign up. And it takes you right in. And it wants to kind of introduce you to Twitter. Um, and you can start just by skipping through until who you want to follow. The step three will give you a couple of folks. We like technology over here at Alpha, so we're going to choose to follow some technology accounts. And then these will give you people who they think you might find interesting, folks like Wired or TechCrunch or Tim O'Reilly. Um, and you can choose to pick them individually. You can get rid of folks if you don't find them interesting. But just to keep it simple, you can just follow all the folks that it suggests for you within technology. After that, it's going to try to connect you with some folks you already know through Gmail or other options. And if you want, you can just skip this step. We're going to be skipping right through with the demo. So you can just see what it's like to have a Twitter account. Now, I very quickly created that account, gave it a name, followed some folks within the technology, and now I'm on the home page of Twitter.com. This right here is what they call a timeline. And like we were saying how it's an RSS feed, everyone who you chose to follow, their content is now coming to you. You can see already that there's a new tweet that was just sent 26 seconds ago from Wired, who we chose to follow. So what you'll see is it's the latest messages come first, and they're loaded in real time. So it means that all the conversations, all the folks you, you choose to follow, are constantly coming to you. Now, before diving in too far into, into Twitter itself and the workings of it, we want to first flesh out the account. We want to finish creating it. And there's two ways you can do it. You can go to your profile, or you can just go to settings directly up here on the top right. Uh, and this will let you choose how to edit your profile and make it a little more exciting. Because right now, all that we have is a name and very little account information. So if you go to the settings up here, you can go and edit your account. So it has a little bit more information. What would you suggest that you set up as a minimum when you're getting started here for personalization of your account? 
Yeah, um, you can really, the key is to add a profile picture and a biography. Those are the two most important things. So when I just clicked the picture, it goes to the profile. Uh, in the profile here, you see it's the name and the screen name that we added, but there's no picture, there's no description, there's no website, there isn't really much about what we're about. Um, and so when folks go and see you on Twitter, when they click a tweet and they look at your profile, they really want to get a sense of who you are. And you kind of have to assume that they don't know you already. It's not like Facebook where you have your name and your picture and all your friends join you, right? These are folks who you don't know and so you really want to kind of introduce yourself. So you can also just go and edit your profile and it will take you, if you're on your profile page, you can edit it directly. Uh, and it will give you all the options that you want to change right here. You should add a profile photo and you should add a biography. So if I said this is a demonstration account for alpha software, and you'll see I'm writing software in a unique way, which will explain why it works that way soon. Um, then these people kind of have a sense of what it's about. You can add stuff like the, a website. So if you wanted to add alphasoftware.com, you could add a location as well. Really, the more information, the more real information that you include, the better. Uh, you want to be a real person and let folks really see who you are. Um, so uh, if you're a personal account, try putting a photo of, a, of your face there, a headshot. If you're a business account, try putting a logo for your business there uh, in, in your profile picture uh, option. Once you've completed your profile by changing your photo, entering your real name, your location, your website, creating a biography, then you have an account that people will actually see and be likely to engage with. When you're just starting, you look like what this thing is. It's called an egg, and that everyone knows. It can be uh, for new accounts, but it can also be used for spam accounts. Uh, and so folks tend not to engage as much when you're an egg, so you really want to try to put a real picture there as quickly as possible. That's what I'm showing you is before really diving into the rest of Twitter. So now let's go back and talk a little bit about the terminology of Twitter. Um, when you send a tweet, when you send a message, it's, it's seen by everyone who's chosen to follow you. Um, and we'll show you that in a bit. But there's also these other things that were discussed in the video. Retweets, hashtags, at mentions, at replies, direct messages. Uh, and those are just the tip of the iceberg. They all have their own meaning, and we'll walk through them now. Um, a retweet is a really useful way to take somebody else's message and post it to your followers. So like we said, when you send a message, everyone who's followed you gets that, just like an RSS feed. Uh, but you can also share other people's content to your followers, and that's called a retweet. And it's just like uh, if, they, if you had sent that message, um, and it just kind of passes it along. You can do this when it's something that you agree with, when it's something that you find interesting and think that your followers may find interesting as well. But it's also a really good way for you to reach new people. When your messages are retweeted, that means that other folks who aren't just following you, but their followers are seeing it as well. Um, and so you really want to pay attention to which of your messages are getting retweeted, because those are the ones that people agree with the most, that find the most interesting. So as you're tweeting, you really want to look every day, or even after you send it, did anyone share that from me? Um, and the things that are shared the most are the content that you're doing best. And that's really a way to improve over time. So I would use retweets as a measure of success. Uh, a next piece of Twitter are hashtags. And the hashtag is this symbol right here, a pound sign. And you use it before a keyword or a phrase. And this is a different way in which content is organized on Twitter than we've discussed before. Uh, there's the following relationship, which we touched upon, where you can follow users and their content is brought to you no matter what. But you can also do a Twitter search to find a conversation around a specific topic. Um, and those are kind of the key words uh, for Twitter. So let's go see what that looks like. If we go to Twitter search and we look for the hashtag alpha anywhere, then we're able to see all the tweets about alpha anywhere, the software for Alpha Software. Um, and you can really see all the recent ones around this conversation, maybe recent developments, new features, uh, latest press coverage, those, or even discussions by uh, the programmers behind it. Um, 
and you can choose to follow other types of hashtags as well. Up here in the top right is the search area for Twitter, and you can type in anything that you're interested in. If you like HTML5 and you want to learn more about that conversation, you can see a video just by typing HTML5, and you see what everyone is talking about uh, for, for this. And there's a whole bunch of different hashtags you can try. You can look at HTML5. Uh, CSS3 is one that's popular. JavaScript and Node.js are talked a lot about here. Um, you can talk about uh, different platforms as well. If you want to look at uh, Android, there's a large discussion about Android uh, and development for, for the product on Twitter. Uh, so as you click around and look at these different messages, you can really begin to see what folks are using and search for them. See, this, this tweet right here uses Android and iOS. So you can jump over and see what the conversation is around iOS. So I have a quick question here. Yes. Um, how would you, What if you didn't exactly know what you were looking for? You didn't necessarily know that uh, pound sign HTML5 was what people were using to talk about HTML5. It seems like an obvious one, but there might be other ones where it's, where it's less obvious and you want to sort of figure out you know, what's, uh, what, what are the hashtags I should be looking for? Yeah, and there's always more hashtags to look for. That's the hard part, is to really figure out what folks are using, because it all kind of starts organically. Someone decides that this is a really important topic, and they want to create a hashtag to make it a category so everyone can discuss. Uh, what you really want to do is look at what other folks are already using in their tweets. So if we go back to the home for the account, this is just the home, twitter.com, this is where everyone who you're following, their tweets come to you. As you scroll down, what you'll probably find is that folks are already going to be using some hashtags, um, especially if you're following other users. Uh, so here, so we can see one for, they created one, the FCC created one for their advisory council, and it's a hashtag that they created. And when you go to it, you can search for it and see all the tweets about that conversation. Um, the key is to really see what folks are already using. It's hard just to search and guess in the dark, but the ones that are used most often, chances are that you'll see as you dive in. Um, and when you're inside of one that you've already found, such as HTML5 or Alpha Dev or Alpha Anywhere, uh, you can see other ones that folks are using too. So HTML5 is one. They may also be talking about CSS3. You can look there and you find stuff for JavaScript, and you'll kind of jump around and find different conversations. Now you're in JavaScript, and you can see Node.js. So really look at the tweets and just jump in and see what other folks are already using. That's great. Thanks. And that's really just the key with hashtags. There'll always be more, but the key is that they organize conversations around specific issues or topics which don't really matter for the following relationship. They're a completely different way of organizing the conversation. So the next piece that you'll see are at mentions. Um, and these are what I was using in the biography before. You saw that we were saying at alpha software. This is the Twitter handle. You'll notice that, al that alpha dev demo became at alpha dev demo. It become alpha software. And that's how you reference specific users on Twitter. You see that I clicked it and it took us to Alpha Software's profile. Um, and so these screen names are really how you have conversations with people. If I wanted to message Richard Rabins uh, at Alpha Software, then I could click this first button, this reply button, and it would pre-fill it with a mention of them. So you'd see at Richard Rabins, and you'd see at Alpha Software um, filled in. And you could just say, hello. And what happens next is once you tweet that out, once you click the tweet button, then they get a notification. Um, so now Richard will, when he looks at Twitter, see hello from this account. And he might be a little confused right now because this account isn't really there, um, isn't really fleshed out or used, but you can see that the tweet is there. So it sends people notifications of you that they were mentioned. If I just said something like, hello, Richard Rabins, just as a tweet like that, then that's just kind of, nobody would see that except for folks who are following me. So you want to use at mentions, you want to say at the username in order to send them the notification. It can also be useful if you're trying to just reference someone that you want folks to check out. So if I did another message saying, check out Alpha Software, I could send that tweet as well. Now, see how it shows up as a link tweet? 
somebody else could click that and go right through and see their profile. So it's a really useful way to reference folks, to send them notifications, and also to tell your followers who you're talking about. The username is really the basis of all type of communication between individuals on Twitter. And that's why we said it was so important to set up one that's either your name or your company account because it's going to be a lot more than, than your full name here. It's really the username, the basis of all communication. Now, a specific type of at mention is called an at reply. Uh, and you saw how I did that, Richard, by clicking the reply button on a tweet. Um, and this functions a lot the same way as an at mention, but it's really a way of kind of threading a conversation. And I'll show you the difference between those two now. As you, you can go back to your profile, always it's right there under your image, and you can see the tweets that we sent. Um, there's a difference between the three here, right? This top one is a mention. You're just saying, hello, check them out. But this one right here, we reply to them. We click the reply button, and it started with Richard Rabins, and now it's a conversation. So if we view the conversation, it's all in one place. It threads back to what it was replying to. And so reply is like a mention, but it's a way of having a conversation with one or more specific users. And it allows you to kind of thread that conversation over time. So we have sort of a question comment, which is now, is everything you're typing here visible by everyone if they went to look for it? Yes, if they went to look for it. So let's talk a bit about what's visible and what's not on Twitter. Uh, we started by saying that it's really about following content. That if you wanted, uh, that I chose here about 34 people to follow, and whenever they send a tweet, their tweets come to me. Now, if other people chose, you know, so I got CNET and I've got Pragmatic Studio and other folks. Um, and now if other folks chose to follow me, then anything that I tweeted would be delivered to them on their timeline. So if I had 100 users follow me, then everything I just tweeted would show up right here on Twitter.com for them. Um, because we don't have any followers yet, because we just created an account, no one can really see what I'm doing unless they go to my profile. If somebody went to Twitter.com and clicked, a, clicked in Alpha Dev Demo, then they could see this too. But since nobody's following me, it won't be delivered to them. Think of it like an RSS feed that nobody is actually listening to, right? It's still there. People could find it, but it's not being delivered to anybody's email or elsewhere. Um, that's why hashtags can be a really useful way to join conversations, especially when you're getting started on Twitter. Because unlike this following relationship, a hashtag lets anyone read a conversation uh, whether or not they're following. So if people are really interested in HTML5, I can send an email that says HTML5 rocks, right? And if anyone else is looking for HTML5, my tweets are going to show up along with everybody else uh, in the stream. So I can see everyone else here who's tweeting HTML5. I don't follow any of these people, but I'm interested in the conversation. Um, so for alpha specifically, we are now using the hashtag mostly alpha dev for alpha development. And you'll be able to find a lot of folks in the company, but a lot of developers as well, who are using the hashtag alpha dev. Um, and so you'll be able to use that in your tweets, and then your tweets will show up in this stream. So we highly suggest using the hashtag alpha dev so everyone can see you before you gain followers. There's one other way that you can have a conversation with someone on Twitter, and it's a little bit more private than what we were discussing. We, we discussed normal tweets, um, at mentions, and at replies, and hashtags are all ways to have these types of public conversations with different levels of visibility. There's one way to have a private conversation on Twitter, and that's through what's called a direct message, or a DM for short. Uh, and this is a message that you can send to anyone who's chosen to follow you. So you can't send this to everybody on Twitter, but if somebody has chosen to follow you, then it's because you have some relationship or they found you interesting. And now you can send them a private message. Uh, you can also receive private direct messages from anyone who you followed. Um, but just a word of warning, you know, it is the internet, so don't say anything that you wouldn't want coming back to you. Nothing is truly private. 
So let's look at what that would be. Since we don't have any followers right now, um, it's very hard to send a direct message. Um, so why don't we uh, start by getting changing the account and making it so it can follow, so it can so we can send direct messages to someone. You'll see we clicked through to Alpha Software, the Twitter account, uh, and now we're going to follow it. You always find a follow button on the right hand side of the window. Um, and it's going to suggest possibly some more folks who are related that you might find interesting as well. So let's also follow Richard Rabins. So now you have this account. It's following some folks and we're going to switch over to the Alpha Software account so you can see what it's like with a more fleshed out account. So now we just switch to Alpha Software. It's a little bit larger, has a little bit more options but we can send direct messages too. Um, and if you look at who its latest followers are, chances are Alpha Dev Demo is going to be right here. And now because it follows us, see so it will tell you when it follows you, you can now send it a message. And this is a private message. And it will send it right along. So you can do that with anyone who's following you. Anyone, uh, and anyone who follows you, uh, can to, anyone who you, you follow can send you a message as well. So those are kind of the private messages on Twitter. You can find them here. You can also um, send direct messages uh, through this little gear over here. That's a really good way to follow up with folks who maybe you talk with a lot on Twitter and who you want to be able to have uh, fuller relationships uh, with and have some type of conversation that isn't fully public. So now we've kind of seen a bit of the various terminology. I'm just going to show it to you quickly in action, um, and then you can. Then we're going to dive into how to grow your account once we kind of see how this all works. Um, so we discussed that there are things like replying, uh, which you can do by clicking the the arrow. You can retweet it to your followers if you want to share the message, and that will send it to everyone who's following you. You can also favorite a message, which just means that you like it and it will save it for you later. That's a good way to show somebody that you saw their message without necessarily showing it to everybody who you know. Uh, you can click through to, at, to at usernames and see their profile. You can choose to follow them from there. And it'll suggest more people to follow. You can also look at hashtags and see what the conversations are for different things. Sometimes people will just create their own hashtags. Um, and sometimes you'll be able to find very active ones, such as education, should have a large amount of discussion. The, the best way to really get a sense of this, if this is too many terms and it feels overwhelming, is just to sit back and get a sense of how it works by watching it. Uh, you'll see that they said that in the Twitter video as well, that really you want to listen before you tweet, because a lot of these terms and a lot of this functionality is unique and it's confusing. Um, and so if you just watch Twitter for a little while, that's going to be the best way to learn. You can see how other people are interacting, what content other people are using, what you find interesting, and that's going to give you the best sense of what works before you dive in and start tweeting yourself. So then the question becomes, Twitter shared a couple of accounts who we want to follow, but maybe it would be useful to follow more accounts that are more targeted to mobile development and to web development uh, that you may find interesting. So Twitter makes this difficult uh, when you first get started. You have to kind of figure out, just as we got the question, how do I know what hashtags to use? There's also a question, how do I know who to follow? So for this, we created a special tool just for Alpha uh, that you can use for free. Uh, and what you want to do is go to alphasoftware.com slash twitter.asp. alphasoftware.com slash twitter.asp. Once you type that into a browser, it's going to take you to our tool, which will let you find folks to follow and engage with. So I'm just going to sign in with Twitter and show you the inner workings and why it's useful. In order to be able to use it, you need to authorize your Twitter account. Uh, and this just simply lets us see who you're already following uh, and make suggestions that you aren't following yet. So it gives you a custom set of users. Uh, it doesn't allow us to, you'll see this very scary warning that kind of makes people freak out about how it lets us uh, follow new people and post tweets for you and update your profile. 
that's on Twitter's side. We don't actually do that. It's just necessary for us to be able to see who you follow and let you follow people from the page. So just to waive any concern that might be there, we'll never tweet from your account or update your profile or post or follow folks without your knowledge. So you can click the authorize button and it'll take a second to analyze your account. Because Alpha Software is a bigger account, it'll probably take a bit longer. If you're a new account, uh, then it will happen right away. And what you'll see once this gets through to the other side right here is a whole bunch of accounts that we find really interesting within the web and mobile development space. Um, and we created a special formula which we called Alpha Rank, which really lets you find the most interesting, engaged, influential, talkative, um, and active folks within this space. Uh, and you can also sort it by other things if you're interested. If you want to find folks who are going to be really likely to engage with you, you can sort it by that. You can do it by the most influential people or maybe just the most active and talkative people. And there's lots of different options. Alpha Rank is kind of a custom formula that integrates all of those things. So once you're there, you can choose any accounts that you find interesting to follow just by using the follow button. Um, and that will reflect on Twitter.com. You will see that these are accounts are actually being followed by your Twitter account. And if you're really interested in a specific piece of programming, say you're really uh, doing a software as a service as your um, business model, then you can type in SAS, uh, the abbreviation for software as a service, and search for that. And what you'll find are folks who are really just interested in SAS uh, specifically. Um, if you're interested in Android, then you can search for that, and you'll find folks who are Android developers if you're really interested in iOS, and so on and so forth. You can really type in any search term, and what we're going to find is the most active, engaged, influential people for that space, and that can be really useful as you're getting started. So if you're looking at, for iOS, you'll find a whole bunch of folks who are really big in iOS developments and, and games and apps, um, and you can choose to follow them. And then on Twitter, you'll begin to be able to see them and see their tweets. If you don't like someone, you can simply reject them and you'll never see them again. Next time that you come in, you'll be able to see a whole set of custom suggestions that you don't follow yet and that you haven't rejected yet. Uh, so we really suggest using this as the most effective way to build your account. Because what you'll find is that a certain number of people who you follow, follow you back. Um, so when you send someone, when I send somebody a follow and I say I'm interested in them, Twitter sends them a notification via email and also on Twitter, and they see that Alpha Software or your account, in your case, followed them. It gives them a, a brief description, your biography and your profile image appear, and so they can read about you. Um, and that means that a certain number of those people who receive that notification will go and look at your profile, look at your tweets, and they may find you interesting. Um, and if you do that over time, consistently, say that you follow 10 people a day, or 50 people a day if you're really active with it, uh, over time, say that 25% of those people follow you back. Well, if you follow 25, uh, if you followed 50 people, then all of a sudden you're going to have about 12, 13 people following you each day, and over a month that's going to add up to a few hundred new followers that you have. So that's really the best tip to build your audience is to follow other people first um, and let that growth, that follow back growth happen over time. Uh, and so this tool has enough users that you can keep doing that every day. So you really look at this not just as the first time that you use Twitter, but an ongoing basis, checking out uh, this website, alphasoftware.com slash twitter.asp and following folks and reading their content. Now what you'll see is I'm back on Twitter.com, and everyone who I've just followed should appear. All these people who we just followed should appear right here. And you'll see them, and you can choose to, if, we, if you're a new account, you'll pretty much see the bulk of your content coming from them. Now that's really the start for, for, getting, for getting Twitter going for you. You want to be able to create an account, flesh it out, really watch the people who are tweeting to get a sense of how people communicate and then slowly build that out over the time using the free tool that I demonstrated. I'm going to show the video again once more and hope that you kind of understand all the terminology a bit better 
and then we'll take it over to Q&A for any lingering questions. So please take a moment while watching the video to uh, submit the questions that you have now and we'll try to get to all of them. In just 140 characters, well, American Express let card members turn tweets into savings on everything from gadgets both big and small to exclusive tickets to their favorite destinations. Morton Steakhouse greeted a weary traveler with a prime cut and excited the taste buds of jet setters everywhere. And Burberry went backstage with the first ever tweet walk to show the world what they'll be wearing next. With just 140 characters, Twitter has become the largest real-time conversation ever created. A global dialogue where people talk about their deepest interests, including their business. Whether your company is just starting out, growing by leaps and bounds, or already an industry leader, it's easy to get started on Twitter. Simply create a user handle and profile that reflect the unique identity of your business. Then, listen, monitor trends, watch your industry, and when you are ready, join the conversation. Be ready to help a customer the second they're in need by using an app reply. Create six second movies using Vine that give a behind the scenes look at your business. And use retweets to create promotions that attract new business. And when you're ready to take your message further, reach new customers by promoting those tweets. And grow your follower base when your promoted account appears in front of the right people at the right time. Because Twitter isn't just 140 characters. It's content that brings the world closer through conversation. Those conversations lead to customers. Customers lead to business, and leading businesses say it on Twitter. Well, that's great. So uh, if there are any questions, now would be a great time to type them in. Uh, we did take some of the questions right in the middle of the presentation, so we may not have any, but we'll give you about, I don't know, 15, 20 seconds to type something in and, uh, and just uh, let us know. Here we go. Um, okay, so here's a question. Um, this one is from Simon, who asks, he just searched for the term API, and he's wondering what in at alphasoftware.com slash twitter.asp. And he says, what determined the results? Is it the tweet contents or the number of tags or tweet names or something else? It should be in the biography itself. Um, so if you're looking for something like iPad or iPhone, chances are you'll only find that. So you see I type in API here uh, within alphasoftware.com slash twitter.asp. Um, and on a lot of the bios, there's API. Uh, you may find here it's it's inside another word, so that's a mistake, and we can try to fix that. Uh, but generally, you'll find it in the biography. So hashtag APIs, APIs here, um, and so it means that they're really identifying um, as as interested in that space. And this is a good idea to do for your uh, profile as well. We talked about adding a biography on Twitter, which can maybe describe yourself. You know, the CEO, so it can describe your title. It can describe what you're interested in, but you can also use hashtags. If you're really big in Twitter API or HTML5 or some other space, put it right in your bio, and people may be more likely to find you based on that. That's great. So we have another question. Uh, this one is from Stuart, who says, OK, I understand how you type in text messages, but how do you do uh, videos or, or other attachments? Yeah, so on Twitter, you can just do it directly embedded uh, in a tweet. So I'm back on Twitter.com, and I'm going to click the Tweet button. And what you'll see is it has an option to add a photo. Um, and if you click that, it will let you upload a photo from, from your uh, computer. So that's really where you can embed a photo. If you want, you can also include a link, and it will expand it um, as a video. So what I did is I went to YouTube, and I'm just sharing... Um, the link in the in the browser, um, and because of the way that Twitter works, they've really gotten good at expanding a lot of the key 
uh, different websites and URLs that you may use. Um, So if I just typed in how Twitter can help your business uh, to describe the video um, and put in a hashtag, alpha dev, so other people could find it. Now this link is going to be a video when I tweet it out. So we sent a tweet, we see it, and now when we go to the tweet, you'll see the video is right here and people can watch it. So really for a video, you can just include it as a link. For a picture, you can embed it directly. Um, and that works for Vine videos as well. Um, yeah. So um, so it works for Vines. And it, actually, if you could explain Vines, that would be great. Yeah. So a Vine is another company uh, that allows you to share videos that are about six seconds long. Uh, and this can be really useful for quick demonstrations or for little things that loop back on themselves. Um, and it's a great social network for kind of sharing those shorter clips than, say, YouTube, which is for full videos. Vine is six seconds long. Um, and so that also works with the, uh, with the Twitter model because Twitter generally people are surfing. They have a low attention span, perhaps. Um, but what you see is that on Twitter there's a large amount of content and very short messages. So you can quickly read a lot of content from a lot of different people. And that's why Vine works so well, because it's only six seconds. It's just a bit of content, and then you can move on to the next thing. Uh, and that's what makes it really like a news feed. See, I'm just scrolling down, and you can see so many much content from so many different people. Vine, a six-second video, really fits into that model. Great. And um, how do you go about um, making Vines? I'm sorry if I just split over that. But... You can just make it on Vine. You just go to the... Oh. Mm -hmm. You go to Vine, uh, and you, for some reason, it's not Vine.com, uh, Vine.co. They're too good for the uh, the M, I guess. Uh, but the Vine.co, you can go and uh, edit it, create it yourself. There's applications that are really nice uh, for the iPhone and for Android. So you can take a video right on your phone that's six seconds long and upload it to Vine. And then you can upload it to Twitter, and it will play directly in the tweet. Um, and that you saw a little bit in the Twitter video as well. That's great. I have a question here from Graham who asks, if you change your username, does it maintain all your history based on your old username? Yes, you can absolutely do that. Um, and if you just go to settings, uh, see this is where your settings are on Twitter, uh, you can change your account username to something that's never been used before. So Alpha Software DF is available. I'm not going to change the company account for this demonstration. But it needs to be something unique. Um, and it will update it. It will keep all your friends. It will even update some of your past tweets, not really old ones, but it will change some of them to your new handle. Um, we recommend trying to create a username that you're happy with forever. Because like we said, it's how a lot of folks identify you. So if you change it uh, to something completely new, uh, folks may get confused. Um, so that's the only reason not to do it. But technologically, uh, Twitter is fully capable of handling that switch. Now, you brought up um, the notion of it changing some of your older tweets. It makes you wonder, how long do your tweets live there? Are they there forever? Are the ones you posted three years ago somewhere on Twitter, or do they have a certain uh, lifespan? Yeah, everything is always uh, findable again. Nothing ever really goes away. Uh, Twitter is good at letting you delete tweets um, for your last 3,200. After that, they might get a little grumpy and say, nope, it's here forever. So you can see that Alpha Software is 3,507 tweets in. Um, the, the first 300 that it sent may be really hard to find and delete. There's going to be third-party uh, services that kind of let you uh, search that. Topsy is one of them. If you went to topsy.com, you would be able to search for all different types of things. So let's type in alpha software on topsy.com. And it lets you search Twitter and, and other networks. Um, and it will go back. So you can see the tweets, four days, six days, people talking about alpha software. If you wanted, you could use this platform to go back years and years. Um, generally, though, nobody is going to be doing that unless they have a specific reason. Twitter is very much real time. The bulk of where people read tweets is on that home timeline that we talked about, just twitter.com, the home. And so it's all just coming in. These are things that are going to be more recent, and as it loads, it's going to be things from seconds ago. Um, see, the newest tweets are already coming in from just seconds ago, and that's where the bulk of messages are actually going to be read. 
So tweets don't disappear, but the chance of anyone reading them is very, very low once they get old. That's great. Well, it looks like we've come to the end of our list of questions. So thank you, Zach, for presenting today. We'll have a recording of this presentation ready in the next few days, which we'll post on our events page, which is alphasoftware.com slash events. Now, if you do find that you have other questions that you forgot to ask, uh, by all means, send them to guides, G-U-I-D-E-S, at alphasoftware.com. I'll make sure to get them off to Zach. And I'd like to thank everyone who attended today, and I hope to see you at a future webinar. Take care. Bye-bye.